Cleveland's baseball team changed names quite a bit in a short period of time. The Cleveland Naps stuck around for about a decade but didn't make much noise. They had more wins than losses, which remains a bright spot for the former franchise name. Becoming the Indians, Cleveland won the 1920 World Series over the Brooklyn Robins in seven games. They would have to wait until 1954 before they would make it to another. Unfortunately, it was a sore series loss for the Indians, having been swept by the New York Giants. Baseball in Cleveland slowly became quiet until their stretch of playoff runs from 1995 to 1999 and in 2001. The 90s was seemingly the best decade for the franchise with success and heartbreaking losses. In 1995, the Indians battled the Atlanta Braves and Tom Glavin, but lost in six games. Again, they managed to fight their way to another World Series in 1997 against the Florida Marlins and Levon Hernandez. Game 7 was one that the team nor the fans will ever forget. They were ahead against the Marlins but gave up the lead in the ninth inning and unfortunately lost in the 11th inning. They've had success since then, but only one more World Series appearance against the Cubs, which went on to an 8-7 loss just short of tying the game. The Cleveland Indians went into this offseason thinking about the additions that they need to make to be able to keep competitive, and they did so with a few additions that are going to make them better, uh, whether it's on defense or offense, starting with the big three with Cesar Hernandez, Domingo Santana, and Delano De Shields. Delano De Shields being the premium package in terms of speed and defense, while Cesar Hernandez and Domingo Santana can provide a little bit of pop and some quality offense for the team. The Cleveland Indians are a team that competes year in and year out. They're a pretty successful franchise despite a lot of their downfalls in the World Series or the playoffs, but um, they still have a talented team. Uh, yeah, they lost Corey Kluber, but uh, what can you do? He's getting older. Anyway, so you're moving on to younger guys in the rotation, and uh, you still have guys like Frankie Lindor on the team, Jose Ramirez, uh, you acquired Ramo Reyes, the line of the Shields. Uh, the city of Cleveland, in terms of baseball, is going to face some hardships uh, in terms of, well, their own division, uh, respectively, of course. And uh, they have diverse the White Sox, who are just going to keep getting better. They're going to be versing the Twins, who are becoming the powerhouse of the division. You know, you have Detroit that doesn't exactly want to lose as many games. So, really, you have some teams right there that are going to try and show some resistance and while the Indians just need to go out there and prove that they could still win some ball games over these tough teams not that you know the Tigers really pose a legitimate threat but I mean yeah they don't want to lose as many games let's start the discussion off about the players with Jose Ramirez the short stack with the monster hack uh, he's a speed power threat and he is the third baseman of the Cleveland Indians, and let's get right into it. So Jose Ramirez had a down season in 2019 compared to his 2018 season, which of course was a really, really good season, uh, a way above average season, but 2019 wasn't exactly bad. Um, probably for Jose Ramirez, it was a down season, but in terms of a lot of other players in the league, they would gladly take the numbers that Jose Ramirez put up, and uh, he just, he has a high ceiling. But anyway, he is a power hitting third baseman. He's shown that even though he is a little bit shorter than the rest of the people on the team, he can still hit monster shots and height means absolutely nothing to Jose. Uh, but he's a power speed combo. He can also steal you some bags and uh, probably between 20 and 30 bags a year. And uh, if he ever stole 40, I don't even know what to say. That would be uh, crazy. But I don't exactly think Jose Ramirez is going to ever steal 40 bags. But nevertheless, moving on, he is 27 years old. Yes, he is still very young. But the question to be posed is can he return to his 2018 form? Jose Ramirez is a tremendous player and has shown that his ceiling is very high. Uh, maybe 2019 is just a, a wacky season for him and he just needs to find his groove again but um, it seems like Jose Ramirez knows what he's doing at the plate now um, yeah in the beginning of the season I think he struggled a little bit more but I'll have to look into that 
uh, but I definitely believe that he has the talent to bounce back. Like I said, he's only 27 years old, so he can definitely bounce back from this. Uh, he's shown time and time again that he can hit for a higher average, and the power is continuing to come along with that. So uh, Jose Ramirez, definitely a guy that I expect to really bounce back from his uh, 2019, where maybe it was a little bit below his standards. So um, I expect big things in 2020 and beyond from Jose Ramirez. And now moving on, we're going to talk about some pitching with a 25-year-old who went to the All-Star game last year and absolutely dominated. He got the MVP of the All-Star game, and that is a humongous honor for someone at the age of 25. And this pitcher has dominated the scene in 2019. Uh, and really, he came out of nowhere. No one really expected this, so let's talk about him. His name is Shane Bieber. Shane Bieber, like I mentioned, made the 2019 All-Star team. Uh, he had 259 strikeouts and 214 and a third innings pitched in 2019, and his whip decreased from 1.33 to 1.05 from 2018 to 2019, of course. And uh, he's only 25 years old, like I said, so you can definitely see the talent oozing from this guy as he continues to get better. And uh, will he continue to surprise people with his tremendous talent? I believe that Shane Bieber is a tremendous talent, especially when you consider the kind of stuff that he brings to the table. He has a nasty slider, he has a pretty good fastball, he has just good, he has a good repertoire overall. Uh, I believe he carries a curveball and uh, change up as well, but I really need to look into that kind of stuff. I don't exactly know his repertoire per se, but I know he is disgusting. Uh, he can command his pitches very well, uh, and he pitches like he's been in the game for years, which is amazing to see, especially from a young guy who's 25 years old. But uh, the Indians just continue to come out with good pitching, and it's really a mystery. How do they do it? I don't know, but it's amazing to watch. I'm really convinced that Shane Bieber is a piece of the puzzle that's really going to keep them in contention for years to come. And if they decide to trade him, he has a ton of trade value because I know uh, people talk about the Lindor trade and that could possibly go through. I don't know uh, where he would be traded, but stay tuned to Major League Talk if uh, anything happens. But anyway, Shane Bieber, great pitcher. Uh, I would definitely recommend him for a fantasy draft if you are indeed going to do one. And uh, he's just absolutely nasty. Moving on to the Cleveland Indians ace of the rotation. Uh, a guy that continues to throw nasty sliders. A guy that throws fastballs that can top out at 97 miles per hour. Uh, let's talk about Mike Clevenger. So in 2019, Mike Clevenger had career lows in earn run average, opposition average, walks and hits per innings pitched. You name it, Mike Clevenger probably had a career low in it. And uh, it's really amazing to see. Mike Clevenger is a guy that has a jerky motion when he's on the mound. And he has tremendous stuff. Nasty slider, good fastball, um, just as well as Shane Bieber does. But um, these, these are two tremendous pitchers. Uh, Mike Clevenger is a little bit older than Shane Bieber. He's 29 years old. Um, but the real question to ask about Mike Clevenger is, if he has a healthy season, can he win the Cy Young? Now, Mike Clevenger is a guy that I truly enjoy watching. Uh, he's someone that can really throw electric stuff. Uh, he goes out on the mound with that kind of Jacob deGrom type look to him with the, with the flow, even though uh, deGrom, I believe he uh, took all the flow off. But uh, hey, it's, it's, uh, it's a Clev thing now. It's definitely a Clev thing. We could call it a Clev thing, I guess. But um. Mike Clevenger is just a really good pitcher. Uh, he has the talent to be able to keep throwing and throwing and throwing and just keep striking batters out. Uh, he makes people look foolish uh, at the plate, and so Mike Clevenger is just good at doing that. Uh, he showed, uh, I believe it was in his debut, uh, that he was just tremendous with uh, a no-hitter into the fifth or the sixth inning. So, uh, yeah, he's definitely a guy that I enjoy watching, and you guys probably do as well. I mean, he's just a tremendous pitcher, and uh, whether or not Cleveland decides to keep him or trade him away, uh, we'll have to see. I'm also seeing rumors uh, floating around about a Mike Clevenger reunion with the Angels, so we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, that's kind of interesting. But getting back to answering the question, I definitely think that Mike Clevenger 
can indeed win the Cy Young if he has a healthy season. I believe that he would have had a better chance uh, in 2019 if indeed he was able to uh, pitch a whole season. But uh, unfortunately, he didn't get that opportunity and it's going to be a shortened season in 2020 if there is a season at all. So uh, are those awards even going to be handed out in the 2020 season? That's also debatable. So uh, it's going to be seen, uh, but Mike Clevenger definitely has the stuff, has the talent to be able to be a Cy Young contender in a healthy season. I think you put him out there for a healthy season, great numbers, absolute great numbers. Uh, this dude knows his stuff, he knows his mechanics, he knows the way he pitches, and he's just going to continue to do that. And with Roberto Perez behind the plate, you really can't go wrong. I mean, he's one of the best catchers in all of baseball, aside uh, JT Romuto and Gismani Grandal. And yeah, Perez doesn't exactly always have cons consistent offense uh, year in and year out, but uh, he's definitely a guy that has tremendous defense. And so he fits in well with Mike Clevenger and uh, leading to his individual success. Lastly, let's move on to a power hitter for the Cleveland Indians. They acquired him from the San Diego Padres. He is an absolute stud, and well, his name is Fran Mel Reyes. Fran Mel Reyes in 2019 hit 37 home runs, and he did have a dip in his batting average in 2019 as well, but I don't think that's too much of a concern because you are seeing power numbers start to surge. So batting average, of course, you're gonna see dip a little bit, uh, unless you're someone like Cody Bellinger or Mike Trout, of course, but Fremo Reyes, I think he can definitely raise that batting average back up. Uh, he's the type of guy that's going to be an, an elite hitter. I could just tell from the way that he is in the box. He has a really commanding presence when he's in the box, and uh, it's just really cool to see Fremo Reyes at 24 years old with light tower power be able to do exactly what he's doing right now. And He's only going to continue to grow, he's going to continue to blossom, uh, whether his defensive shortcomings uh, bite him on the butt, you, you just you never know, but um, maybe he even improves on his defense as well, but I think Rice is just good with focusing on his offense, and the question that I wanted to focus on was, can he evolve into an all-around offensive juggernaut? And now, to start off, since he's only 24 years old and he's putting up disgusting power numbers, Fremo Reyes is a player with a lot of talent. Uh, he kind of reminds me of a Joey Gallo type player with the amount of power that he possesses and his ability to consistently hit home runs. But having his uh, batting average drop about 40 points isn't exactly concerning to me, uh, considering his power numbers did go up. So there's definitely a reason for it. Uh, but in the same hand, I think he just has the talent to be able to raise his batting average once again to around 260, 270, and that'll be great. That'll be great for the Indians. That'll be great for the game of baseball to obviously see what they want. They want to see more home runs, of course, and uh, well, Fremo Reyes is doing that, you know, and I know that the entertainment industry uh, loves it that the game's producing more home runs because I feel like that's what people like watching, but we'll get into that topic in another video, of course, Fremo Reyes has a ton of talent and even though he has defensive shortcomings that's fine he makes up with all of it with his offense in my opinion and he definitely has the ability to hit 40 to 45 home runs a year but maybe Framel Reyes's defensive shortcomings uh, kind of take from the fact that he produces at a high level I don't think so I think offensively he really makes up for those defensive shortcomings and Framel Reyes is just going to continue to be the type of player to put up monster numbers offensively. I can't see him really having too many down seasons where he hits less than 25 home runs anymore. And, uh, well, he's just, he's a great player and he's going to continue to get better. So, uh, well, I am a big Framel Reyes fan. He's a big guy with big pop and he's going to become a big name in all of baseball sometime soon. If you like this type of content about the Cleveland Indians or any of the other teams that I've posted so far, and make sure to drop a like and subscribe. It really helps me on this channel. I believe we're at 40 subs right now. And uh, it's a small number, but we're going to get there. And uh, I'm really excited for what's to come. I still have a ton of team videos that I'm working on right now. Um, I wasn't actually able to post too much uh, with all of the rioting going on. And I don't really want to even get into that. There's just so much controversy surrounding that topic. But um, yeah, it's just been hard to get stuff out when there's been noise all around the house but um anyway got it done 
This is the first video back. Cleveland Indians, baby. We're all good to go. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed it, please leave some love, some support. And uh, if you want to tell me what team you would like to see next, please drop a comment or even contact me on Instagram. I will leave a link down in the description below. But for right now, it has been Major League Talk with your Cleveland Indians.